This is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Today is Wednesday, July 29th, 2020. My name is the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. We're talking this week about spiritual practices. Yesterday we had a meditation practice. Today we're going to be talking about prayer. Years ago, before I went to seminary, while I was recovering from chemotherapy, a beloved family member and I were talking about that experience of, of recovery and illness. You know, he said, I don't believe in God, but I believe in prayer. Prayer is a little complex in our tradition because it almost inevitably leads to conversations of uh, to whom or what are we praying? But while that's a common way of thinking about prayer, it's not the only one, uh, or even to me, the most important way of thinking about what we're doing in prayer. Now, traditionally, there are at least three kinds of prayers. Prayers of thanksgiving or praise, when we give thanks for something. Prayers of confession, when we speak about a thing that we've done wrong and prayers of intercession, where we pray for something to be different than it is. Of course, it's more complicated than that, but, you know, this is a, <laughs> this is a five minute reflection, not a, a several hour long sermon series. But here's, here's the thing. In each of those forms, the act of taking deep feeling and distilling them into words is what's important, almost regardless of who or what we are praying to. So to take a, a practical example, if I'm praying just as myself, a prayer of confession, I can be honest with myself about where I've gone wrong. I can name exactly what I did wrong, knowing that either one, I'm naming it with radical honesty to myself, which is a really helpful thing to do, or two, I'm speaking it to the divine who in my conception is defined by grace. Either way, it is a practice that deepens my spirit. Or take a prayer of intercession. You know, we get wrapped up in our heads all the time, especially as Unitarian Universalists. And even with everything we know about medicine and prognosis and treatment, all that, there's still tremendous value in saying out loud, I don't want her to be sick. This isn't fair. I want it to be different. I want her to be better now. There's a practice I learned um, from Rabbi Rachel Berenblatt um, that uh, the, the name in Hebrew is Hit Baradut. It's a Hasidic practice, old, um, but defined and refined by uh, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov in the late 18th century. And at its most basic, the practice is this. Go for a walk and talk with God. Don't get caught up in the form of the prayer. Don't worry about the language that you're using. Just start talking with radical honesty about your challenges, hopes, and fears. Go for a walk and start the conversation. So if you need uh, an image for this, and apologies to both Rachel and uh, Reb Nachman for using this, think of Tevye from Fiddler on the Roof. He's, through the whole play, he prays continuously through it, but not in a formal way. His prayers are a running conversation with someone or something just off, off stage, not seen, but very much present. So here's the homework for today. I can't pause this video for three minutes while you go take a walk like we did yesterday. But if this sounds intriguing to you, and if the weather cooperates, try it tonight. And if it sounds like something strange and uncomfortable, think about doing it anyway. Because sometimes the things that we are most hesitant about become our most cherished practices. I'm not a singer. You know that if you've heard me sing ever. And there is no greater highlight to my days than singing Eilish to sleep at night. She doesn't care that I can't stay in tune and I 
promise you that whatever your conception of God is, she also does not care about your comfort or fluency in prayer. It also doesn't need to be a walk, um, but I find that it does help to get outside, away from where I work and do errands just for a short time to mark the transition from secular time to holy time. So enjoy, good luck, and let me know how it goes. Tomorrow we'll talk about sacred reading and the relationship between scripture and spiritual practice. I'll see you then.